Hello everyone, I hope you're enjoying your time at home. I know I am. Today I'm gonna to be working underneath the car again and I'm taking care of the last few remaining bare metal spots on the chassis. All those areas that I modified and repaired still need to be sealed up and touched up with undercoating. So then I can start assembly. Check it out. Garage time. I've already lifted the rear of the car with the tire stands, and now I'm gonna lift up the front, but I'm not gonna use the tire stands. I'm gonna use jack stands on the front because I'm probably gonna take the tires off. I'm under the car now, it's up on jack stands. You can see I use this uh, corner area. So this is the part that is the pinch weld. And I like to use this corner here right kind of near where the tire is. Um, I'm also using, this is an old cut up piece of tire to protect the uh, flange there on the jack stands. Anyways, here's the other side. I supported it here because I think I'm gonna take this cross member out that's where the steering rack attaches to. I think I'm gonna take that out because there's a lot of area that needs to be repaired. You can see this is all bare metal right here. This section was the part that was damaged in the accident. It's all been reworked and cut out and rehammered, straightened out. So this is the part that needs a lot of attention. Inside here, this is where the steering rack goes. It's been removed from last week. But you can see that all the undercoating is damaged wherever I did the seam welding. So I need to fix the undercoating in those areas. This is all the original undercoating on the car. Back here is in the seat pan area. This has all been modified and I've already fixed this section here. This all looks great. I'm just gonna be doing the same treatment for the floor pans Although I'm not going to be spraying anymore because I don't want overspray. So I'm just going to be doing this mostly by hand. I did get a little overspray underneath here, so I'm just going to quickly touch this up with a brush. I think that's what the factory did anyways, they just used a brush. These spring plates are all going to get replaced later on, so I'm not too worried about the spring plates. And then here in the front, this is where the new suspension plan is placed in. So underneath here is bare metal, needs to be retouched up. I tried to touch this side up with the stuff in the can and it's just not worth anything. So I'm gonna redo this with some fresh undercoat. This jack here is a, a safety measure just in case the car does fall on the jack stands. But this is all new metal, even up here where I cut out for the oil cooler. Um, all that should be undercoated.
Okay, I'm about to go underneath the car. I have the car covered in its protective, you know, car cover. Some of my favorite tools. This is my angle grinder with the heavy duty wire brush on it. I have the uh, strip it disc on the Makita sander. This is good for tight spots. And then even tighter spots, I have these, uh, a smaller strip it disc goes on the end of a drill and then another wire brush. This is gonna get all the areas that have been disturbed. Undercoating's either flaking or there's bare metal. I'm gonna get all that loose stuff off. The hard part is mostly over getting the undercarriage cleaned up. So I'm gonna mix up some of this epoxy primer and treat the bare metal spots. The wire wheel does make the bare metal kind of shiny. So I am gonna go over it with some sandpaper to rough it up to 80 grit so it sticks really well. But while I'm sanding, I want this stuff to uh, co-mingle. This does not need to be sprayed on. I mean, it turns out nicer if you do spray it on, but because I've already painted my car and this is the undercarriage, I am going to brush this on to make my life easier. Here's a quick look of what it looks like under the car, just with the brushed epoxy primer on. It smooths out pretty good. I mean, this is perfectly fine for what this is. This is the area where the seat mounts were welded on down the line. This is the driver's side. This is where I repaired all these little hooks were all bent over and this section was crunched in so I've removed that damage. This is gonna get painted black right up into the rocker. So from here down will be black. So I'm gonna come back with the top coat and make all that look even. Okay, painting upside down is not easy under the car. So I've learned the hard way to put a paper towel around the handle of your brush, tape the paper towel on there so when you're painting upside down and it's dripping, the towel catches some of it. Now my hands are all black because I don't have any gloves and I'm not gonna go to the hardware store um, at these times to go get gloves. I'm just toughing it out. So let's get the last coat done and then see what's next.
I'm gonna pull this fender off too. It's only on here temporarily when I put it on the trailer to tow it home. There's only three bolts on here, so I'm gonna pull this off and do some undercoating underneath this inner fender area that needs it. I had started putting some undercoating here on the front, but that was the end of my container and I was just getting rid of the material. I need to continue over into this area all the way up until it gets to this panel where the fender attaches to. I'm gonna have the whole inner fender black and then the door jam area will stay yellow. After the epoxy, I'm a big fan of the seam sealer. So any seams that are open or have a big step to them, I like to smooth it out with this stuff. Just getting ready to do some degreasing before I do the undercoating. Here's how the bottom looks just prior to putting on the undercoat. So all the surfaces have been cleaned and there's lots of seam sealer used. In areas like, you know, right here, this is where I ground out the seam sealer to fix a defect. So often I will put the epoxy primer down and then seam seal in the depressed area so that when I fill this in with the undercoat, it sort of blends well. Lots of seam sealer, like on these little puck things. This is where a weld was or a hole was filled. Seam sealer on the seams. Yeah, anytime there was like an opening in any of the seams, I just fill it up. And then any of the low areas, I just fill up with seam sealer just to get it about the right level before this, the undercoat goes on. This area all cleaned up really nice. This is the steering rack area. And then here's the suspension pan area. Okay, I'm going with 35 pounds, which is on the low side. I'm definitely looking for high texture, so that should help. Okay, here we go.
That's the first coat down. Uh, it went pretty well. I put it on super heavy, so I want to give it lots of time to dry because I really want that factory heavy texture. Uh, I did get a few spots on the yellow, really minor. I am going to do the second coat, but I'm probably going to wait till uh, maybe even next week. I feel like I don't have enough material for the second coat. Cleaning the spray gun is a big pain, so I don't want to do it three times. I just want to do it twice. So I think I'm going to order some more just to be safe. So let me show you what it looks like. As a side note, I've been hard at work at creating a whole series on TIG welding. It's not only about TIG welding, it's about how to strategically place your cuts in the car, how to metal finish, how to do all the different uh, butt welds, different levels of difficulty, how to reduce the heat affected zone, all sorts of uh, fun stuff. It's gonna be available as a course. So if you're interested, please reach out to me. I'm gonna put a link in the description below. In fact, if you want one of the checklists that I created for this course, I'm happy to uh, give it to you. Click the link below, you can find access to that. And stay tuned for the release of this course. I think it's gonna be helpful for those of you who are a little bit new to welding or maybe you're comfortable with MIG welding but you wanna to go to TIG welding. Uh, I think this would be a great course. I think when I get another coat on some of these areas that were ground all the way to bare metal, it'll have the same texture or similar texture to the factory. You can just see how this needs to be built up just a little bit more in the middle. This is the suspension pan area. You really can't tell where the new pan was installed.